Hey everyone, welcome back to Seek and Destroy, and today we have a movie review for you guys and gals, so buckle in. I know I don't really do a lot of movie reviews these days, uh, you know, outside of like Venom and, you know, Batman animated stuff or DC animated stuff, but uh, every once in a while, you know, when we started the Venom vlog, actually some of the first people that we got on the show to do intros were some of the actors and actresses that were in the film. And since then, I've been kind of following all their careers, and anytime they have a new movie or show coming out, we try to give them a shout out or a plug because it was really awesome of them to do, you know, intros for our show back when we had, you know, a couple hundred subscribers. And uh, it was really cool of them. And so I wanted to follow their careers and see what other things they get into. But one of them that stayed in touch with me this whole time has been Jared Bankins. And he's been a really nice guy. Reach out to me anytime I post something where I'm not feeling too well or have any health issues or if I'm just posting like a comic review or whatever. Like he'll like it. He'll comment. He'll, he'll write me a DM. You know, he checks in on me. And he's just the coolest guy in the world. And so I had this bias, like when he reached out to me and said, hey, I have this indie movie coming out. Would you like to, you know, watch it and stuff? And I'm like, well, yeah, when it comes out, let me know and I'll, I'll watch it and review it. I'll, I'll pay for it, you know? And so he's like, cool, that would be great. So, you know, he let me know that it was coming out in June and it actually came out a week early. So, uh, so I was kind of caught off guard by that, but I'm glad. I'm, you know, I'm proud uh, because uh, he's a really awesome dude. And like I said, he checks in on me. So I, I do have a little bit of a bias towards Jared. I like him. He's a great guy. Uh, but I like him because, uh, and I think he likes me because I compliment him on his acting a lot. Like that scene in the first Venom movie where he contorts his body and he goes to the ground. He shows sadness. He puts his hand on the window and stuff. Like he really nailed it in that scene. No, it's really hard when you're an actor and you're starting out and you're, you get like one scene here or one scene there in a movie or a TV show. You really have to shine. And, and him and Martin Batts Bradford and Ariadne, like everyone kind of stood out to me in Venom. I was really taking a note of everyone who had one or two scenes. And Jared was one of those guys. So, uh, you know, so I think we have a bias towards each other. Uh, but I try to always put that kind of stuff aside and, you know, and actually review the work. So this film he released, it's called uh, We All Think We're Special. And it came out on Amazon. I know he was looking for distribution for a while. Really cool that it ended up on Amazon. So if you have Prime, you can watch it on your Prime account uh, or you can rent it for three bucks in high def or buy it for 10 bucks in high def. And I would say if you're a fan of kind of like dialogue driven dramas that are like kind of slow moving and have like a, like a slow build towards, you know, things towards the end, uh, because I'm not going to spoil anything here. This is not a spoiler review. Um, it's just my just overall thoughts of the film and kind of the content of the film and what it's about. But I would say if you, if that kind of sounds like your cup of tea, like I was thinking of marriage story almost like where you just have Scarlett Johansson and uh, and Adam Driver, you know, two really a great actor and a great actress, like two really incredible performers. Uh, they were in each scene just really giving it their all. And I liked marriage story for that reason, like because they really became those characters. And that's why I feel like that's it's not a one to one comparison to this movie. But I would just say if you like stuff like marriage story or or like dialogue driven dramas, you should really give this movie a shot. I mean, this movie is very emotional um, and it really rings you out. Uh, if you've ever known anyone who has um, been an alcoholic and has been trying to recover from that or, or you know, have a inter people try to have intervention for them or they're trying to get their life back together after some, you know, thing that alcohol led them to do that, you know, maybe they're not proud of or other people aren't proud of, whatever the case is, like this movie kind of deals with that subject matter. So um, so the, the story, I think, is based on a, a true story, but I didn't really dive too much into the research on that, you know. Um, I kind of just wanted to accept the movie for what it is, but apparently it is based on like true events at least. Um, Kirby Voss, who is the story, the person who came up with the story for this, um, is also the director of this film. And uh, the writer of the film is Felicia Stallard. So I guess Kirby kind of constructed the overall you know, outline maybe. And then uh, Felicia went through and did all the beats and the dialogue maybe. Um, so it's hard to tell like who does what, but I will say from a script standpoint, this is a really solid script. Like the characters are very clearly defined throughout the movie with reveals that go throughout the film. Like, you know, especially one with, uh, you know, the main character, we have Charlie, who that's Jared Bankins plays Charlie, but we have William McGovern plays his best friend, Ed, and they talk about a breakup in the beginning of the film, but then like 30 minutes in, they tell you who he broke up with. And I wouldn't say it was like a big twist or anything, but it's just kind of that uh, writing how almost like, um, what was it, uh, The Sixth Sense, where it's like you have two people sitting in chairs 
and it looks like they're talking to each other, but they're, they, no word has actually been spoken, but it implies that there was something there. So your brain says, oh, it's, it's this. Uh, I kind of got caught off guard with that with Ed's character. Like I, I wasn't thinking whether he was like straight or gay or anything like that. I was just like, oh, let's, you know, like, okay, he had a breakup and I, I didn't think about it past that. So when you start peeling, you know, back the layers of these characters and you start learning about each of them, you're like, oh, okay, that's, that's interesting. That actually adds something to this that's, uh, that I wasn't expecting. And that's kind of how the movie is. It goes in that kind of reveal way where it's not like blowing your mind with the reveals, but it's just um, you start off having a, a clear idea of who these characters might be. And then throughout the movie, you go back and forth on, you know, is Ed really doing the right thing uh, with Charlie here? And is Charlie, you know, is he really that bad of a guy? And it goes back and forth. And so I, I really dug that. Uh, so the basic plot of this movie, to just get right to it, is that Charlie is a functioning alcoholic. And he's a college professor. He teaches math, I believe, at a, a, a like a community college like nearby uh, I think they briefly mentioned that but that also establishes a lot of the conversation he has so I feel like it's a good character moment to mention his job and the fact that it's like winter break so that's why he's at home right now and he doesn't have to go to work so they have this time to do this intervention and Ed played by William McGivern he's a he runs his own business his own mechanic shop and he is Charlie's best friend obviously and he sees that Charlie is really breaking down he's you know he's really abusing himself with alcohol and the weird thing is charlie's happy he's like dude i drink and I, it makes me happy i'm functional i can teach math to you know kids at a community college no problem but then he reveals hey sometimes i buy the kids that aren't 21 alcohol if they do good on their tests which makes him kind of a scumbag and so there's like these back and forth where you're like okay, I like this guy, and he, oh, I don't like this guy. Well, he brings up a good point, but he's still kind of a douche, you know? And, oh, but he had this traumatic, you know, event happen when he was a kid, or, or was it really that traumatic? And you go back and forth with these characters throughout the movie, and what brings it through, or what brings you through that story is not only the, the dialogue, which is really solid, but it's the performances. Like, most of you, even I mean, people who are fans of the, you know, watch my Venom vlog show, you all know who Jared Bankins is, but for most people out there, they might not, and they might not know who William McGivern is, but they both do a great job in this movie. And like I said, that's why it kind of reminded me of a Marriage Story, because it's basically those two actors in that movie just doing a really good job, and that's what this is. It's taking this, this concept of, okay, Charlie is, you know, Ed at the beginning of the movie is getting over a breakup, like I said, but then Charlie is like, oh, okay, come over to my house and we'll just drink. So they do and they get hammer drunk and the next day Charlie's still fine because he has not stopped drinking so he's still functioning whereas Ed is massively hung over and then this guy shows up who reads the will and writes of uh, Charlie who lo just lost his mom eight months prior to the movie starting. She is given the house to an organization so she's not even given it to her son. Um, and Charlie has been living and kind of squatting in this house and they gave him eight months to vacate. But in that eight months, he's just destroyed the house and he's drinking and just, and you know, going over the edge. And Ed realized that he didn't know any of this was happening. So once he sees, okay, Charlie has to vacate the premises soon. Uh, they're giving us like a week or two to get out of here. And he goes, and Charlie has to get his life around and go find an apartment and all these things. So Ed is like, all right, I'm going to help him, but I can't help him if he's just always drunk. I need him to be sober and we need to get him through this rough patch because he thinks, Ed thinks, Charlie's just drinking to forget, you know, to get over the death of his mom or something like that. But you find out Charlie actually really, really didn't like his mom that much and has some resentment towards her. So again, as the layers peel back, you start to learn more about these people. And like I said, nothing's revealed that's mind blowing, but what's revealed is very real stuff, like very human things that could mess with someone emotionally or you know or mentally or things like that and and so charlie has had these bad experiences and these past experiences some that allude to like i don't know that's my thing with the ending of the movie and again i'm not doing spoilers but i feel like the movie it's like inferring something might have happened between charlie and his dad uh that is that the movie doesn't tell you happened like the movie tells you one thing happened between charlie and his dad but i feel like they infer something else happened too and I think that leads to this other thing that happens in the movie, a reveal between Ed and Charlie and something they did as, as kids when they were younger um, that leads to the current situation. And so there's all these things. And like I said, when you see Charlie go off the deep end, he starts using 
uh, you know, Ed's, you know, personal life against him. He's attacking him, you know, for doing nothing wrong. Ed's you know, ultimately just trying to help Charlie. But the one thing you see that's clear in the movie is that Ed is not qualified to, you know, help Charlie through this situation. He's just trying to be a good friend and, and maybe even a little bit of a white knight to an extent to help his friend get through something that, that Ed is not qualified to get him through. Like he thinks he's, you know, figured it all out. I'll, I'll dump this alcohol. I'll do this. I'll hide, you know, hide things. I'll, I'll lock everything up. I'll take apart his engine so he can't drive away to the liquor store to get more alcohol. And me and him are just going to lock ourselves in this house for a week or two. And we're going to totally, you know, get him through this. And that was Ed's plan. And it's, it's really half-assed and that it comes apart uh, for Ed. Um, and then big, like I said, some reveals happen and it starts to really hurt their friendship together. These guys who had been friends since they were kids. So I would say, again, if you like you know, kind of, it's slow moving, but it, but it's very encapsulating. Like I, the whole time I was watching the movie, I couldn't look away. Like, you know, sometimes you pull out your phone, especially when you're watching at home, you're very, you know, inclined to pull out your phone and, and you know, look, check on Instagram or whatever. Uh, but I didn't, uh, you know, th there was a couple times where I'm like, oh, what's going on on Instagram maybe. But then I was like, wait, hold on, what did you say? And then, uh, you know, so I didn't even go reach for the phone. Um, so as soon as you start to drift, maybe a second, the movie finds a way to pull you back in, either through the dialogue or the performances. And so for me, like as a kind of like I said, I'm a, kind of an old guy, but I have a short attention span sometimes uh, to see this movie pull me in like that um, and, and some things in it that I really related to and found uh, very eye opening. And I really appreciate that about this movie. So, again, I have a bias towards Jared. Sure. And I'm going to be very open about that. But I'm, but I liked him as an actor before I got to know him. I already saw that he has, you know, great acting chops, and he carries the living hell out of this movie. He really is awesome, and I don't mean carry it like everyone else is bad. Everyone else in this is good. There's a couple small parts, like I said, the the guy who reads the will and who's like in charge of getting the house to a realtor. The realtor pops up later, and she has a couple great scenes towards the end of the movie. And there's there's real and Ed, you know, William is great as Ed in the movie. But Jared is really, really great in this movie, and uh, and he sells the the role of Charlie so well. As heartbreaking as Charlie's journey is, he sells it. And so for that reason, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, I already put up an Amazon review up, and uh, I'll actually flash a couple other reviews from Amazon that I saw on there. I'll flash those up on screen because it seems like the people that are watching this that have seen it are liking it. And I imagine not a lot of YouTubers are reviewing it. So if you watch this movie and you like it, Feel free to reach out to other YouTubers that you're a big fan of, like Jeremy Johns or, you know, or Chris Stuckman or any of those guys, like anyone who's way bigger than I am, and reach out to them and say, hey, man, review this movie, uh, because this movie is really awesome and it should get more buzz and more, uh, you know, word of mouth out there. Because, you know, I know we talk a lot about superhero stuff and big mainstream things on this channel. But I do like independent films. I like independent comics. I like all these things. Um, but it, it does take a certain one to really make me want to talk about it. And I didn't want to just talk about this because it was Jared's movie and he's become a friend of mine. But I told him, I said, I'm going to be honest. The ending of this movie, I'm like 50-50 on. I still don't know if I agree with the choices they make for the ending of this movie with these characters. I would have personally liked something else. But if it's based on a real story or a real events then I guess maybe that's why they went that route, um, which is even more heartbreaking to think about. When you watch the movie, you'll understand. But I I really was like, oh man, I I, I wish I wish it went, you know, things went in a different direction. Uh, for me personally, as someone who wants to in, you know, uh, enjoy something, like I don't like to just be brought all the way down and then down further. I like to be brought down and then back up. But But that's me personally. But other than that, I still felt like the ending works for the movie. I just have, you know, like that, that instinct of like, okay, well that doesn't always work for me. It's, you know, not a choice I would have made or not what I typically like in these kind of movies, uh, the, how this wraps up. But, um, but I do think it, it ultimately does fit what's going on in the story. I just, I don't know. I feel like another version could have fit too as well. Um, but that's just my opinion. So again, other than me being ambiguous about the ending and kind of 50-50 on the decision they make uh, with that ending, I still do like the movie overall. And it's mainly because the dialogue is really well done. And there's um, and, and these characters are really interesting. Even if you don't like them, um, the performances really sell you on, you know, Ed and Charlie here. So 
please go watch this movie. It's on Amazon right now. Rent it, buy it. If you have Amazon Prime, you know, watch it for free. Uh, please just, you know, get it out there. And if you watch it, leave a review on Amazon, please, as well. Um, that's all I can ask. As a friend of Jared's, I would say do that. Whether you love the movie or don't like it, just put your feedback out there. Let people know how you feel about this movie, but watch it. Um, definitely support indie films like this because these people worked really, really hard to get distribution for this movie during COVID of all things. Like they filmed it before COVID, I believe, and then been, or, or like right at the beginning of COVID, and then have been trying for like a year now, a little over a year, trying to get someone to distribute it. And that is very hard to do. And the fact that they got Amazon of all places to release this movie is a big, it's it's huge success. And so I, I congratulate everyone who worked on this movie. You really hooked me i really love it and hopefully you all work together on something in the future and wherever you guys go you know outside of jared william and you know uh voss like i'm gonna follow all of your work now uh because uh you know i really dug this film and i can't wait to see where all of you go next so if you've seen this movie please let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and like i said also go write an Amazon review as well, and then tell some of your other YouTuber uh, people that you watch that you're big fans of, tell them to review the movie as well and to see it, because I'd love to see more people talking about this, not just, again, because Jared's my friend, but because that this, the performance and the you know performances in this film are just solid. Like I, like I said, I liked him as an actor already, and this just took him to another level, and I can't wait to see what movie he's going to be in next based on this performance. He should get... Uh, he should get some kind of nomination at least for his performance in this movie, I feel, but he should also, like, I'm I'm already, if we do a King of Neverland movie, he's going to be my Captain Hook. Like, I, he's so good. He's so likable. Even as a, as a douchebag at times, you really root that he's going to pull through from this. Um, and you really feel Ed's pain when he sees Charlie not pulling through. And it, it's tough. It's a hard movie to watch, but it's a very good movie. So go, please check it out. Please, please check it out. And let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Uh, that's it for me. That was my long review of this movie. I'll try to edit it down a little bit, but uh, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll continue the conversation, as always, down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. We'll see you all in the future. Peace.